This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. Me not getting what I want when I want it is not a sum total definition of my relationship with God. He is able to do what he said he gonna do, and I'm gonna trust him throughout this process. I don't understand why that's happening, why this is happening, but I do understand that I got a flashback of I got too many times where he did what he said he'll do. Now a delay, a delay is not a denial. When you give, your gift goes to work, spreading the gospel, uplifting communities, connecting believers from all over the world. It's easy to support the ministry with your giving through Change Express. The process of giving has never been easier for those on the go, so get started today. Go to www.creflodollarministries.org forward slash Change Express now to sign up for Change Express. Easy, automatic giving. This is your world, so let's vow to make it a better place. Let every heart that needs to know you love is here to stay. Ooh, it's time we live a new life. Ooh, Let us love shine bright in you. We're saved by His grace, so we embrace your love today. I'm about to enter into something that has probably taken 41 years for me to figure out how to articulate it. And I, I need you to hear it. I really thank God for this church. I thank God that you're students of grace. I thank God that you sit, you know how to sit, you know how to listen, you, you know how to, you know, you know how to eat dinner, you know how to eat just food. Um, and maybe I might not get it right as far as how to articulate it today, but I, I think it's time for me to attempt to, to do this. Now, there are five ways, we probably won't cover them all today, but the believer's life that should be in complete dependence upon God is taught in many different ways throughout the Scripture, and, and we may not have recognized it. But there are five different subjects that are taught in the Bible that have been designed to teach the believer complete dependence. I want to look at the first one, the complete dependence upon God is taught through, here's the first one, through the teachings of faith. Through the teachings of faith. Faith is a teaching that is supposed to teach the believer, the believer about complete dependence upon God. Now, let me show you these three scriptures. We're just going to read them. You're probably going to interpret them as you have always in your past. And then I'm going to become an enemy to those three scriptures. But let's read them uh, first of all. The first scripture, Hebrews chapter 10, 38, Hebrews 11 and 6, and Romans 14, 23. Let's go to Hebrews 10, 38. I, I'm going to show you that, oh man, why it's so important to get this thing in context? Because grace was supposed to be the teacher of complete dependence upon God. And I don't know if that happened. Let's see. Now the just shall live by faith. Yeah, he's supposed to be living by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Okay, so the question is, okay, so how is this supposed to teach me about complete dependence upon God? All right, let's go to Hebrews chapter 11 and 6. Setting it up now. Hebrews chapter 11 and 6. But without faith... It is impossible to please him. Well, I know God is pleased when we live a life of godliness and we're in complete dependence upon God, but how does this uh, accomplish that? For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. He rewards those that diligently seek him. All right, let's go to Romans 14 and 23. Romans 14 and 23. See, it's easy for you to read this and define these scriptures based on what you have learned about faith in the past. 
And I'm telling you, you've got to ask yourself, even based on what you've learned in the past, how does that teach me complete dependence upon God, and how does it teach me godliness? Verse 23, and he that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith, for whatsoever is not of faith is sin. All right, so now right now, ladies and gentlemen, it's obvious that an understanding of the word of faith is needed to bring out the full meaning of these scriptures. I, I have got to give you an understanding of the word of faith. If I don't give you an understanding of the word of faith, you will continue to look at these scriptures, and I guarantee you it's not going to be teaching you complete dependence on God. Somehow you'll come out having more dependence on what you can do. You follow me? Now, let's go to the book of uh, Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4, verse uh, 18 through 21. I want to read it in the King James and then in NLT, because one of the clearest explanations of faith is found in Romans 4, 18 and 21. I mean, we've struggled. I, I remember when, when, when we start teaching this, it's like, okay, so what is it? For what is it? Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. And, 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 and so what is it? What is it? Well, faith is um, acting out on God's Word. Well, what is it? I and mean, what is it? And I'm not saying I got a problem with any of that stuff, but the clearest definition of the word of faith is found here in these set of scriptures here. Are you ready? This is Abraham talking, and Abraham was promised, especially Sarah, I think it's Genesis 18, he says, you're going to conceive. She started laughing at him. Then it, I think God's like, oh, are you laughing? No, no, I, I, no, no, I'm, I'm not. I'm just kind of, I'm happy. And Abraham saying, I'm, what? I'm, I'm going to be 100 years old and, and, and have a kid? What? And then God showed up later on in Genesis and said, now I am here to fulfill what I promised. Now I told you, uh, uh, Sarah, you're going to conceive. Now I'm here to bring it to pass. And God put something on that 100-year-old man and that 90-year-old woman. <laughs> And I tell you, there was something going on up in that tent that they ain't seen in a long time. You understand? All right, now watch this. So Abraham gets this, and he says, who against hope, he believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be, verse 19. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, which means there are no seeds, there's no life-giving force. It ain't working, all right? When he was about 100 years old, and then he says, and he wasn't just a problem either, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief but he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Watch the next verse, and here it is. And being fully persuaded that he had promised, he was fully persuaded that what he had promised, that what God had promised, Abraham says, I'm persuaded that what God has promised, that God was able to perform it. Did you see the dependence right there? Abraham said, he promised it, he's able. He's able. He said, this has nothing to do with me. I got dead stuff. Sarah got dead stuff, but he's able. So we're not depending on me and we're not depending on Sarah. We only depending on I feel that Baptist coming up when that Abel. <laughs> Abraham was strong in faith because he was fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was able also to perform. So Abraham's faith was a dependence upon God to fulfill his promise. Does everybody see that? 
Abraham's faith was a dependence upon God to fulfill his promise. I can even go back and, 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 and fill this in. So, you know, faith in God then, according to Abraham here, is complete dependence upon God. Complete dependence upon God. Now, go back to verse 18, and let's plug it in. Look at NLT on this one, Romans 4, 18, 21. I, I, am, I am now giving you an understanding of the word of faith. The word of faith is depending completely on God to do it. I don't know how we left that to any parts of you. And this is why God let this thing happen with Abraham. He needed to make sure everything was dead so nobody nowhere could take credit that you couldn't even start depending on yourself. All they know is that we feel good tonight. <laughs> All right, now watch this. Even when there was no reason for hope, Abraham kept hoping, believing that he would become the father of many nations. For God had said to him, that's how many descendants you will have, verse 19. And Abraham's depending on God did not weaken. Even though at about 100 years of age, he figured his body was as good as dead, and so was Sarah's womb. Abraham never wavered in believing God's promise. In fact, his depending upon God grew stronger. And when you depend on God, you bring glory to God. Ah. He depended on God, and he gave glory to God. See, I used to think that giving glory to God was thanking God. Not necessarily. When you depend on God and have complete dependence on God, that's how you give glory to God. I don't give glory to God by how loud I say, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. No, I give glory to God by how, 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 how very quietly I tell you, I'm depending on God. And God says, oh, he giving me the glory. Did y'all hear that? He giving me the glory. Now watch, he said, Abraham never wavered in believing God's promise. In fact, his dependent on God grew stronger, and in this, he brought glory to God. He was fully convinced that God is able. You know that old song, don't you know God is able? He's able, he's able. All right, whatever. <laughs> he's able to do whatever he promises. I submit to you the understanding of the word of faith, complete dependence upon God. Now, go back and read those three scriptures real quick. Hebrews 10, 38. Now, let's plug in our understanding of this. Let's plug in our understanding of this. Hebrews chapter 10, 38, Hebrews 10, 6, 11, 6, and Romans 14 and 23. Now, the just shall live by depending on God. And if any man draws back from depending on God, my soul shall have no pleasure in him, because he's now dependent on himself. Hebrews 11 and 6. But without depending on God, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him, and that's not going to happen without depending on God. Romans 14, 23. Romans 14, 23. And he that doubteth is damned if he eat because he eateth not dependent on God. For whatsoever is not of dependent on God is sin, or you're missing the mark when you decide not to depend on God. All right, now watch carefully now. Faith is an emptying of oneself. Faith is an emptying of one's self-will. Faith is an emptying of one's self-confidence. Faith is an emptying of one's self-effort. 
It, can, it will not be faith if, if, your, if your self-will is there, your self-confidence is there, your self-effort is there. It is not faith. Faith, listen to this, this is huge. Faith is more than trusting God to do things ask of Him. Faith is more than trusting God to do things ask of Him. It is trusting Him to do whatever He in His infinite wisdom knows to be best, even if it is a denial of the thing you asked. Hold on a minute. Let me, let me go back. Let me go back. Faith is more than trusting God to do things you ask of Him. How many times you've asked God for me? Like, I got faith. I asked God for this. I got faith. That's going to happen. I asked God for that. I have faith. That's going to come to pass. And, and, and that's, that, that's, that's cool. I'm saying it's more than that. I'm saying we've been limited to just, I ask him to do that, and I have faith for what I ask him to do. And so I have faith in his power. I, I want his power to make what I ask come to pass. He says, but when you get to understanding that it's, it's, it's the complete dependence upon God, it is now trusting him to do whatever he in his infinite wisdom knows to be best. Even, even if it is a denial of the thing that we ask for for the time being. It is asking God for your wisdom. We have faith in his power. We have faith in his power to heal us. We have faith in his power to deliver us. We have faith in his power to give us a, a promotion. We have faith in his power to protect us from our enemies. Absolutely. But he says it's got to be more than that. Do you have faith in his wisdom to know through his wisdom that this might be the best thing for you right now before you see that manifest later. We want what we want. When we want it. But God knows some of the stuff you want, you ain't ready for. So he might decide and I know this for a fact. You might say, Lord, heal me, and by faith I'm healed in the morning. And you wake up in the morning and it's worse, and then you keep it for another month. That's when you got to back up and say, I still depend on you. <laughs> me not getting what I want when I want it is not a sum total definition of my relationship with God. He is able to do what he said he going to do, and I'm going to trust him throughout this process. I don't understand why that's happening, why this is happening, but I do understand that I got a flashback of I got too many times where he did what he said he'll do. Now a delay, a delay is not a denial. And some of you might be in, in a delay. You don't get upset when you go to the airport. You expect to leave at 11 o'clock, and they say the flight's been delayed. You don't get upset. You just sit yourself down there, read a book, or do what you got to do, because, you know, eventually you're going to get on the plane, unless they cancel the flight. But even if they cancel the flight, tomorrow is coming. There's another opportunity to do something. God... I've only been taught to have faith in his power. Now he's teaching me to have, have faith in his wisdom. Yes. Creflo Dollar, do you believe that in my infinite wisdom, I know what's best for you? Yes. <sighs> yeah, Lord, but I, I really wish you'd just go ahead and do this. Yeah, I know you do, son, and I will, but we got to get to some stuff because I gave you some classes 10 years ago that you didn't want to take. You quit. You, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't finish the classes, and a lot of stuff God have you to go through, you need to go and go through it. Because you either go through it now, you might have to go through it later, but you, you, God knows what he's doing. I said, I said, say, God knows what he's doing. You got to trust him. You will understand it better. Look at that really didn't came up out of y'all. Bye, bye. 
I was going to say later on down the line. I used to think and I used to teach that all illness will be healed if only the sick person has enough faith in God. If they just have enough faith in God, then all sick people would be healed. Uh, am I denying that it takes faith to get healed? Yeah, faith takes possession of my healing. But I wanted to, in a sense, almost exalt my wisdom above God's wisdom, like he don't know what he's doing. I really started thinking about this when I ran into the Scripture in St. John chapter 9, verses 1 through 3. It brought up a lot of questions to my theology. St. John chapter 9, verses 1 through 3, look at this. We got to be careful when we get involved in those, you know, exact statements. Uh, God's got a million ways to do something. Don't try to pin him down to doing it one way. He'll open your eyes if you're blind by blowing into the next time he'll slap some mud into the next time he'll say open up and see the next time he, he got a, he got a lot of ways to do what he do this it, the Bible calls it the manifold wisdoms of God all right now watch this this is a story about a, a, a child that was born blind man if you could be in the room of that child that was born blind and hear the parents who didn't have faith in God's wisdom why you let my child be born by? Lord, I've been good. I'm a good person. I go to church. Really? Well, bravo. And Jesus passed by, and he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, look what they asked. Here's this man who was blind. He's been blind since he was born. And the disciples asked him, Master, who did sin? This man or his parents that he was born blind. See, religion had taught him there's got to be a reason for him being born blind, and it's got to be sin. Who did sin? Now, now this is what got me. The man? Well, the man was born blind. So what, what, did he sin when he was in his mama's womb or something? <laughs> well, was it his parents that he was born blind? And there are a lot of people think that same way in the church today. Oh, I must have did something for God not to do and give me the answer I wanted. Who did sin? Wow. You remember when Jesus went in these villages? He went in one village, he was able to heal everybody. He went in another village and he wasn't able to heal nobody. And some preacher said, it's sin. Uh-uh, it was sin in both villages. One village believed, the other one didn't. But look what he answered and said. Jesus answered, neither hath this man sinned nor his parents. But the reason why this guy was born blind, so that the works of God should be made manifest in him. The New Living Translation says, so the power of God can be seen in him. I got a greater purpose for this. I appreciate y'all let me, let me, let me work through this, but my glory is going to be seen through this. Could it be that some of the answers you don't have right now is just setting you up for a future manifestation of God's glory? And can you trust that God going to do something with the curriculum you might be involved in right now? All that takes depending on God. I got to depend on God when things look good. I got to depend on God when things don't look good. I got to depend on God when I understand. I got to depend on God when I don't understand. I got to depend on God when I'm strong. I got to depend on God when I'm weak. I got to depend on God when I'm happy. I got to depend on God when I'm sad. I got to depend on God. Why would I want to depend on God? Because he's able.
Have you become confused about what is and what is not ungodly? Creflo Dollar gets to the bottom of how God's grace guides you into a life of true godliness in his series, Godliness versus Ungodliness. Worldliness stems from a heart that desires anything but the Lord first. You got to believe that grace is able to instruct you and to teach you how to live a godly life, to refuse worldly lust. The likeness of Christ comes through inhabitation. He's in me. The secret is Jesus lives in me. The number one work of the Holy Spirit is to change you. This five message series can be yours for a love gift of just 30 US dollars for CDs or 40 US dollars for the DVD set. Call the number on your screen, scan the QR code, or visit CreflodollarMinistries.org and click eStore. Order yours today. Welcome to a place built for you. Where finding grace messages to watch is easy. He wants you to rejoice and to enjoy that all your sins have been taken care of. Where your spiritual needs are met. Where you can access CYWN anytime you want. Where exclusive content is accessible 24 hours a day. Where getting spiritually fed anytime you want feels fulfilling, uplifting, simple. There's a great harvest that's been prophesied for centuries of time. The wealth of the wicked, how I many you know that transfer must take place? But you know what? We've got to make room for the new. Welcome to the Creflo Dollar Ministries TV app. Visit your Roku, Amazon, or Apple TV app store and download the Creflo Dollar Ministries TV app now to start streaming for free. For more information, visit CreflodollarMinistries.org. By the grace of God, we feed and clothe people, provide houses, visit hospitals and prisons, and do so, so much more. Every time you make a financial donation to support us, you do these things as well. The tangible relief we provide to God's precious people is only possible because of your faithful support. Thank you for supporting us as we strive to reach a lost and dying world for the Lord Jesus Christ. If God has placed it on your heart to support the vision of this ministry to reach the world with the gospel of grace, you may call in to make your financial donations or log on to CreflodollarMinistries.org. God bless you. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe. The preceding program was brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries.